Hello there guys and gals, if is everyone backwards here, back with another 100% achievement slash trophy guide and today we are getting it all in Infliction, a slightly walking simulator but more horror adventure developed by Caustic Reality, published by Blowfish Studios and is available for just £15.74 in the UK and $19.99 in the US. So the premise of the story is you are searching a house to put missing clues together to find out exactly what happened there. Only it isn't as easy as it seems as of course a ghost is hunting your every move. Well, sort of to an extent, anyway. We will be going through warps and time itself as we unravel the mystery, but I can honestly say this is one horror game that actually had me tensing up and actually slowly almost made me poop myself <laughs> with the intensity and gameplay of not knowing where the ghost is and that she could strike any time. Of course, she's not always about those, so you can relax at some stages. As for achievements, there's quite a few uh, miscellaneous ones and we would be grabbing all 28 collectibles, but otherwise nothing too difficult. Uh, there is only really one sort of luck-related achievement, but we'll come to that in a little bit. Also, some of the achievements can potentially glitch, meaning you have to do something again. But for me, it was only the sort of supernatural investigator, which you've got to take uh, pictures of four ghosts. And the last achievement, which I just had to quickly run through twice. So nothing at all too bad there. Anyway, with that being said then, let's begin. So you pick up the torch immediately, you press the X button to take the torch with you. Go around the car here, you press the left trigger to crouch. We'll need to do this um, a few times throughout the game. It's sort of like your yeah, paranormal activity. Follow the path, there's only one path to take here by the way, as we enter the house. It's sort of like your paranormal activity. Um, and do you remember the sort of Silent Hills demo that came out a few years ago, um, PT, which obviously never got released for obvious reasons. Sort of like this, but it is actually rather tense. So as we enter the house here then, we will get our first two collectibles. One is on the right hand side here, the picture of the dog. Sometimes with the right trigger, you may have to zoom in. If you can't um, press A to pick up a collectible, try and zoom in and it'll sort of unlock that way. And the second one then is on the fridge, which is a picture of this drawing right here. And the way you know you have unlocked a memory or a collectible is that it'll say new memory unlocked in the right top hand corner there. And again, before you move on, if you do get stuck, press the start button, scroll over to where it says memories, and you should see that you have the first two unlocked. So if you ever get a bit confused or a bit worried that you haven't unlocked them, go ahead and do that. So go directly into the room on the right. We'll be getting our first achievement right here. And this is for watching a TV show, which is... I mean, this is, even without the ghost, this is just goddamn creepy in itself. Um, <laughs> but go over to the bookcase or the video case and we will be getting our third collectible, which is a horror film. Which looks... Well, if it's anything like horror films these days, it probably sucks balls, but otherwise... Usually pretty good. Don't know what it is about this guy, but he's goddamn creepy. So there we have it then. First achievement unlock, Master Chef, nice and easy. Now directly underneath the phone here in the top drawer. Um, no, not the letter, but the stopwatch is our fourth collectible out of 28 already. And there will be a fifth one in the third drawer for us as well. So, nice and easy. Now, it's definitely worth just um, keeping a look at the story and having a look at the actual dialogue and things because it does get very interesting about how this all pieces together. It's actually pretty damn good. So, through the double doors then, uh, right next to the Big Ben looking clock there, we will be getting our sixth collectible already. And it's this photo just above the fireplace. She looks happy. Well, she looked happy before she died and is now a ghost anyway. Ah, unless ghosts are happy. I, I don't know. I'm not a ghost. So, <laughs> anyway, moving on. Now it's time to go up the stairs. And at the end of the stairs, we'll go to the right into the bedroom. And we'll be getting collectible number seven. Now, there are points in this game, by the way, that the game gets very, very dark. And from what I couldn't find was any option to put our brightness up. So, if you think that it's a bit dark... Uh, just put the brightness or contrast up on your TV for a little bit. 
and that'll be good for you. So there's the ring. That's what you need to collect to get that one. But yeah, there would, I had to turn the contrast up myself because we uh, I couldn't bloody see. So into the left, into the baby's room then, and we'll be going for collectible eight already, which is this little book here. Um, it can be a bit sort of finicky with the um, opening and closing of drawers, and that should unlock us another achievement. That's for getting all the collectibles in this little time warp here. Go to the very end door, and this is a code that we've got to put in, and it is... 0516 Of course you'd have to normally do a little bit of searching around to get that but you know ain't nobody got time for that And now we are into our little room here. Uh, the book is not important You don't need to worry about that, but you can get this plane ticket which you need to take with you So make sure to do that and when we try to leave This is where it all starts getting goddamn creepy With the mask. Hmm, so that's a quite an unfortunate way to go there, and I genuinely thought that was just Corey Taylor there from Slipknot with his new mask. <laughs> uh, doing a bit of side work, murdering. So basically what we've got to do now is leave the house. Goddamn creepy noises everywhere. Lights flickering, so we need to go down the stairs, which is on the right, and then into the garage, which is just on the left, right here by the main door, and just get into your car and go. But of course, it's never as easy as that. By the way, the loading screens for you is going to take about 20 to 30 seconds, but I've cut it down just to save a little bit of time on the video, that's all. So just be aware, it was never that quick for me. <laughs> it's about 30 seconds long. I'm stuck at the gate and we'll play with you. Just the two of us in here. See you Okay, sleepy boy, time to wake up. Now you are just in literal hell. Ah, close enough. Close enough to it anyway. So now what we'll be doing, we'll be going for collectible number nine. And to do that, we'll need to go back down the stairs here. We'll be doing this a lot, just sort of wandering through the house into different portals of hell. Um, go right around to the double doors on the left. Now we can't actually access this room yet. What we have to do is just um, go, um, just have a little walk around the kitchen. Get your head together before you um, crap your pants a little bit later on, and then the door will open to the right in just a little bit. Tragedy has struck Pleasant Fall. A woman was found murdered in her home. She was brutally stabbed over ten times. The victim's name was... So now the room will be unlocked, so we can get our ninth collectible already out of 28. Um, and what you'll have to do when you find books like this, you actually have to turn all of the pages for the collectible and the memory to unlock and uh, count. So now, just on a word on the ghost, uh, you will know that she is quite close to you because there will be like a VHS, old VHS tear on the screen. You'll have that sort of effect. Like like it was with Slenderman, if anyone played the Slenderman games, and it, when he got close to you, you had that sort of effect, which you knew he was close. This is exactly the same thing. So, if that happens, you can hide, but honestly, there's no reason to, because even if you do die in this game, the checkpoints are very generous in this game, and you can just start from a little bit closer to where you were anyway. So it's not too bad. So we've got our second, uh, third achievement, sorry, coming up now. So once the door opens, just keep trying to open it. It'll open eventually. Go directly to the left, and we'll be going straight to the end of the hallway through a door, and we'll be interacting with a mirror, and we will be entering the mirror world. <laughs> So 
So, as I said, you know, as we begin to enter all these portals and different parts of time and existence itself, keep, just keep an eye out on the story right here, because, <laughs> really, it does baffle the mind. Um, sorry, I thought there was a collectible here, but there's nothing there, that's just an old stupid box, so... Where we need to go is actually to the right hand side, um, move a bunch of big boxes out the way, these big boxes, and we'll be going down the only path that we can go down. So once you've interacted with the book, this isn't a collectible, this is uh, all to do with story. Have a look in this hole before you leave and you will get another achievement. Now for some reason, the achievement didn't actually pop and unlock for me on screen. So I just have a little, uh, little double check. If it's not unlocking for you, just keep uh, zooming in and you should, it, it should normally pop for you straight away. But have a zoom in if it hasn't unlocked for you and obviously if you think it definitely has, just do what I do here and just double check that it has unlocked and then we can be on our little merry way. So now we can just exit this as things start to get goddamn creepy. And she batters the crap out of us. A woman was found murdered in her home. Stabbed over ten Managed times. Managed to make a call to 911. Had been victim to domestic me abuse. Just monster living in my house. He's drunk. Maybe it is my fault. Well, abandoned I'm here. Here so much. <laughs> I mean, if it wasn't obvious enough, there are obviously points in the game the ghost will kill you no matter what, and you'll know this by the next loading screen, which means we've gone on to the next chapter. So exit the room, go straight ahead, down the end of the hallway, where we will get our 10th collectible in the bedroom we got the ring from before. First of June, 1990. Okay, so the next part can be um, random for you. Basically, there's an achievement, a sort of riddle that we've got to solve. There'll be some writing on a wall, and we've got to go down a specific room. Now, for me, on the wall here, it says curiosity killed, so that means we've got to enter room nine. If your writing says unlucky for some, you've got to go down room 13, and if it says Deadly Sins, you've got to go down room 7. They're the only three I know, so if there's anything different, just let me know in the comments below, and obviously I'll sort of update the, I'll update it when I can. But they're the only three I know, so mine says Curiosity Killed, so we'll be going down room 9. And before we do that then, we'll be getting some strong, strong painkillers on the right for our 11th collectible. And we need some strong ones since we keep, keep getting freaking stabbed all the time. And there's that old VHS tear effect when the ghost is close to us. On the right here then, there is a camera and we will need this for an achievement later on and for quite a bit of other things as well. Uh, but what we can do first then, uh, basically you just press um, Y to get the camera up and then press the A button to uh, take the picture. And what we're doing, go to the back end of this wall then, take a picture and it will show that there is a key there to unlock a room on the right.
nothing special in this room, so go past the um, crap hole, or whatever you like to call a mess. I personally call it a crap hole. Now, on the left right here, we are getting collectible number 12 and another achievement. All you do is drink. So if you feel like it hasn't counted a course, just pick up a couple of things. Um, pick up a couple of bottles like I do here. And that is one hell of a drunkard. Fair play, I'm impressed with that. So then, in this door right here, get your camera out and take a picture. That is one picture out of four that we need for the achievement Supernatural Investigator. Move it from side to side, and as you can see, she's hiding right there, the sneaky cheeky bitch. But that is uh, Supernatural Investigator, one out of four. Now, these are the rooms that we need to go in with the random writing on the uh, wall. Sorry. So you remember mine, of course, said earlier, uh, Curiosity killed. So... I will need to go down room 9, but again, if it says unlucky for some, you need room 13, and if it says deadly sins, room 7 is what you need. Um, pick up these bits of things for our camera, take them with us as well, and I need to go in the room 9, which is directly on the left, just where I picked these up. Also, if you do mess this up, you get two tries at this achievement, so if you mess it up the first time, don't worry, just reload your checkpoint and go again. Now, before you go any further, turn directly around and then go back outside. Here's the achievement, because we'll be grabbing our 13th collectible. Sadly for me, though, the ghost will get me here, so if... Um, but what you need to do from this point is directly turn around and go straight back into the kitchen and grab a tooth. But the ghost, you've just seen her on the right-hand side there. She just pops down the stairs out of freaking nowhere. Stupid bitch. So yeah, if you do get caught and die, don't panic because you will just be able to go back into the kitchen anyway um, from this point. Also, if you do die and you've already caught, um, already got a collectible, a collectible still count even if you die. So if you want to have a double check just to make sure you've still got 13, the same amount that I do, you still should be good to go. So even if you die, collectibles still remain collected. So with that then, you can, now we can head back into the kitchen after that slight delay of being um, bitten and eaten to death. There's a tooth on the table we need to grab, and then uh, take it with you, just turn around, watch this little, um, little scary asshole climb a wall. Eye to domestic violence All you do is drink. I need you, and I love you more than I can express. I don't understand how this happens. Sometimes he scares me. I just need to know the pain. So there we are then, more death, just in case you didn't get enough already in the short <laughs> 20 minutes. Um, what we need to do now, just exit out of the garage right here and out of the basement. And then we'll be going upstairs. Going into the room that we got the ring collectible and the sort of book collectible a little bit earlier on. And we'll basically just be getting a radio at this point, so... You know, still creepy ass noises about. And that's what I loved about this game. All these little noises just made me tense up. All these little VHS tear effects made me tense up because I thought I was going to get stabbed and eaten again. So the game does this really, really well. They're not just cheap little jump scares like sadly you do see in other horror games.
So once you awake from your slumber once more then, there is a photo directly in front of you, so grab that and take it with you. And now we are ending up in this sort of police station. Uh, once you are finally, once the door finally opens. Oh, mate, I know that's supposed to be creeping tense, but come on. We got shit to do, man. Collectible 14 right here is this big tape recorder. So once you click on that, there's nothing else to do, you can just leave. We're coming up to another achievement now, which is this vending machine right here. Just keep clicking on the buttons. Keep clicking on all the buttons until the achievement unlocks. I didn't kill my son. Yes, I have postnatal depression, but I'm telling you. Well, I had a strange feeling something was wrong. And I ran to his room and I found his crib pillow. So there we go, once that one's done then, go to the elevator, uh, click either up or down, doesn't make a difference, but, well, we get another achievement anyway for, well, you'll see. Ugh, I hate, if there's anything that I hate in any horror, it is all to do with bloody goddamn babies. Creeps me the frick out. Uh, go directly to the door behind you. Pick up this key card right here. Yeah, just... Oh, babies. They always make babies so freaking creepy. And then I look at my baby with intense suspicion. Uh, go to the door, which was directly uh, next to the vending machine there. Don't enter it yet, though. Just get the key card. Um, unlock it. and But don't go through it yet. Go to the door that says line up. And then use the key card on that. We'll be going in there, uh, getting yet another achievement, get your camera out, take a picture of the supposedly empty lineup wall, and yeah, well, it's not empty. Yeah, creepy ass son of a... And now we can go into the room that we unlocked but did not enter next to the vending machine. There is... Not a collectible, but it is a photo that we need to pick up, so take that with you and then just watch the cutscene play out. By the way, the photo in the lineup is your number two out of four for the Supernatural Investigator. So after that then we are back inside of the house now, so exit the room, go downstairs once again and we'll be getting our 15th and 16th collectible once you turn around and go through the double doors. There's nothing in here, you go through the double doors, the hallway leading to the kitchen, get your two collectibles. I, I just found it like this in his room. I was sleeping and I heard it from here, go into the door directly on your right for yet another collectible. Why won't you touch me? Obviously, turn the pages as you do. And then, surprise for me, I <laughs> get dead again. There she is. So, that's random though. The ghost is random. So, she might be there for you, she might not be. If she's not, all you have to do is just literally go directly in front of you through the double doors. But what I'm about to do now is just show you exactly where to go again. Um, in case you didn't get the collectible or you think that you might not have actually uh, counted towards it when you picked it up. So if you do die, you just start in the baby's bedroom again so we can just go directly downstairs back into the room with the collectible and then we can go back from there. So there's even Squidward there on the last page, looking mighty radical, I must add. So from this point then, stupid ass ghost bitch, go directly through the double doors. There's a door on the left, which can be hard to see since it is pretty dark, but this is the door that we'll be uh, going through. And there is another photo just above the fireplace there, as you can see, shining, we need to pick up. But apparently I'm stuck... I can't get past furniture. I'm not a ghost, so I can't get past furniture. 
Go ahead, take this with you then. And once again, more spooky ass crap's going to happen. Investigation has begun into the tragic death of a six-month-old baby boy. Look, my baby boy just died. <laughs> it had a strange feeling. <laughs> what kind of god would kill an innocent baby? What kind of god would So yeah, we got dead again. Now, this next achievement that we will be going for, um, first of all, go directly down the hallway because we'll be getting yet another collectible. But this next achievement is sadly kind of luck based. So what we need to do, um, basically, we'll be killing the ghost um, with light, with like a sudden burst of light. We just got back. Um, the reason it, why it's quite sort of lucky is there are two lights that we need to shut on and shut off. There's one in the kitchen behind you and one just above the door, as you'll see. Now, the luck part of it is that she can come either way. So, sadly for us as well, she takes about three to four minutes to get here. So, get your 19th collectible on the right-hand side here. There is a phone that is ringing, which we'll need to pick up in just a bit, but go ahead and get yourself set up first. So we need to make it dark, um, first of all. Open up all the doors, because of course she can come from anywhere, this is our point. Um, make it as dark as you can, turning off all of the lights. This bit is where it got quite tense for me as well, so here are the two lights that we need to do. Honestly, it's best to just keep um, flashing this one on and off as it's quite um, instant. The kitchen one can be uh, a little bit delayed, which doesn't help. So now go ahead, pick up the phone. Uh, you can't skip this bit for a minute. Now, if you die more than twice, the phone stops ringing. So if you're ready, you just pick up the phone and then you can go from there. You don't have to listen to this bit of dialogue again. But like I said, the reason why this is such a pain in the ass is because you've got to wait at least three to four minutes for the ghost to appear. And you'll know when she starts to appear because you'll hear Crackling on the radio upstairs, then as she gets closer, you can hear your heartbeat. And then finally, when she's in range, your time to strike is when the old VHS tear effect happens on screen. So again, you're just sort of waiting around for three to four minutes. It's a pain in the ass. I had to do this five times before I finally got her killed. Um, otherwise, it's not too bad. It, this is the hardest achievement in the game but purely based on luck, this one.
So remember, the second you see just a little tear effect, then you start spamming the A button on this light. Now. And then when you hear that, like, weird noise, like a machine or something starts sounding up. Normally she either screams or it sounds like a machine or something starting up. That's when you know you've killed her. So, yes, it will take... Uh, just go into this painting, by the way, and we'll warp ourselves into a new location. But yes, that may take you four or five times, so just be aware there. It may take you a good while to get that one complete. Uh, immediately go to this tree, and just on the uh, just on the other side of it, you can see a little cross just hanging, floating there. Just zoom in on that, and that is for yet another achievement. And then we can turn directly around and go into the cabin now. So that's the only tree you have to... So as soon as you start directly on the right, that is where the tree is, as you've seen to get that achievement. And we're going for collectible 20 now out of 28. It's a piece of paper on the floor. And then when you are done with that, we'll be going for collectible 21, which is in this typewriter. And then you can just sort of walk around for a little bit and then a wolf's head starts talking because you've lost your mind. He wants to fix it up, so we'll have our own romantic getaway. Last night, staying with the neighbors for the weekend, so I guess I'll make the most of it. By the way, you don't actually need to pick this up. That is uh, nothing for you to worry about, so don't worry about it. Keep waiting for Wolf. Did you hear that? Dad's a drunk. He drank and drank. The answer lies below. When the wolf stops talking then, just look directly below you, get your camera out, and take a picture, and that will open the cellar door for you. There's no ghost or anything in there just yet. Jump down, if you can, with all the, you know, struggling and stuff. There's another collectible on your right-hand side, which is this sort of little voice recorder right here. And you can look at any other stuff, but that, that nothing else counts, so... You're all good to go now, so you can just uh, nip on down to the only path that you can go down. Open up these cellar doors, and then once you remove outside, you can quite clearly see, if you look up in the window of the um, cabin right here, you can clearly see in the second window on the right, you can clearly see the ghost there. So, camera out, take another picture, and that's three out of four for Supernatural Investigator. And the fourth one is actually coming up just in about 30 seconds. Uh, for some reason, though, that the picture wasn't um, coming out. So, for me, sadly, the achievement for me didn't unlock here. It actually glitched out. So, I'm hoping for you, once you take a picture of the ghost in the window there, go down this little bit of hill here, and there's a well at the very end. But before you jump in the well, get your camera out and take another picture of the well. Uh, just looking down right there, so don't jump in straight away. Take another picture and you can clearly see there the ghost is right there. So now for you, hopefully the achievement should unlock. For me it didn't unlock, but if it doesn't, we do actually have one more opportunity to do it in just a little bit anyway. So if it doesn't unlock here, don't worry, we've got one more chance to do it. Jump down the well and cutscene please. Okay, so I lied, there is no cutscene, but <laughs> we're just back in the house now, and we're going up into the attic, and all we have to do is just follow the only path which involves not going back downstairs. Uh, there's only one path for you to take until you get to the very end with the um, wedding veil, or the wedding, you know, the thing that women stick on their heads during weddings, that thing. 
All you got to do is um, that actually counts as a collectible, and you got to take it with you as well for the ghost to get really pissed off now. To see the bride before the wedding. It is called a wedding veil, isn't it? I've, I've never been married, so I'm yeah, yeah. Why not? Let's go with that. Now go. We're gonna be late to the altar. Just needs a woman's touch. A cold day. It changed the man out here. So more deathness on us then, um, as soon as you wake up, straight ahead of you on the table there is another collectible, we've only got four left to get now after this one. And we are coming up to, if you did not get the achievement for Supernatural Investigator, now it, this is where we are getting the fifth, it's, it's kind of like an extra one in the game. So normally at this point you'd have to go left, but all we need to do is go continue all the way down the hall. Continue all the way to the end, and there's a door right on the left-hand side. Take your camera out, take a picture, and hopefully, this time it will unlock for you. If it didn't unlock during the well section right there, hopefully that will be the fifth and last one for you to do. So, otherwise, sadly, you'll have to just replay a chapter at the end of the game, which I've had to do, sadly, for myself as well, but hey, there we go. Because there are no more chances after this now. There's only five opportunities to get it. So now we can go through these double doors. Eventually. And on the right hand side. Move these big boxes out of the way. And we will slide down a vent. Which is the most fun you'll have in this game. For about two seconds. I mean fair dues. You smash your head quite a bit in this game. If you're not getting stabbed by the ghost. You're smashing your head. And you do well to keep being alive, so, hey, congrats to the main character on this one. Now, this bit, uh, we're coming up to another achievement, and what we have to do is, there's a big old butcher, and he looks mean. But what we have to do is basically lure him into this room where we're in now, by stepping on the broken glass in front of you. And he'll be like, yo, bro, what the fudge, but with more of a demonic scream about him. Immediately when he starts coming, crouch and go in the vent behind you. There's a vent behind you, so immediately crouch when he starts getting all pissy. Uh, as fast as he can, get out, and then on the left-hand side there will be a button on the wall which we need to press as quick as we can, and then that will lock the demon inside, unlocking the Confronting Your Demons achievement, which is handy for us now. And we are only sort of about 20 minutes or so from the game's end. So, but even if you do miss it, you can just um, go and lure him back in the room and then try it again. So go left when you go out of the double doors. Again, there's only one path for us to take. Uh, basically, we'll be powering up the elevator. Uh, it's a nice little section, nice little relaxing section, sort of, this is. Sort of.
So then now we are back inside the house, so go to the left and immediately getting another collectible on the kitchen counter right here, the 25th collectible. And now we're back out of the house again, so turn directly around, go straight through the door. But do not go all the way down the end of the hallway. If you go down all the way to the end, the ghost is still there and she'll be killing you. So go in these double doors to the left. Go into the door, uh, the only door in this room. Um, pull the left lever first, or lever, and as soon as the lights get to five, then you pull the right lever. Now. And that's another achievement done for killing the ghost once again. I wish she'd piss off for good, but there we go. So now we can go back out, now we can go to the left, because the ghost is obviously not there, because we just smashed her up, son. Uh, go to the right, actually, the, you can't actually get through any doors here, uh, we'd be going through a door on the right-hand side. As I finally realise what the hell I'm doing. So this is the one we need to go through then, we'll be getting collectible 26 out of 28, and it's just this little recording here on the table. And now what we'll need to be doing is the big statue right there. We'll need to take a photograph of that. And there are four symbols in the photograph that we need to match up in real life. So go ahead, take a photo of it. And as you can see, the four symbols are on uh, two on the left, two on the right. We need to match them up together to be able to go ahead and get on through. So first one then is the Illuminati symbol, you know, the triangle with the eye in it. Yep, that one, so that one is good to go. Next up then is a, like a sort of wine glass looking like. Third one is a weird looking triangle, like a unity symbol. There you go, just, just have a look, just in case. And then the fourth one is, well, you can, go, you can go to anyone. I think it's the sort of constellation looking thing there, but it opens up anyway. So now we're good to go. And we are heading down the basement, which you always do in horror games for some reason. And just go straight to the end door. But yet, yeah, not sure why. You see something in a... You, that's what I don't get with horrors. Normal people would run away. No, people in films go, Yeah, fuck it, let's go down the basement. Let's see what's hiding down there, because it's not like you're crapping yourself already. <laughs> so once you exit through that door, go directly into your left... And we'll just be heading around this sort of little bit of boiler, head into the satanic symbol right here. And, well, n now what we've done is basically enter the actual portal to hell. So now we're back in our little basement garage bit, so we'll just need to exit this now. And directly in front of you, on the little cabinet here, there is collectible 27 out of 28. We've only got one more to do, and that will be coming up quite shortly, actually. 96. But we're not actually quite done with this yet. If you head up the stairs, we'll now be transfer, um, transported elsewhere. Which is just great. You know, we're almost done. But... Hmm. Weird stuff keeps happening. So, down the steps, go into this like little reception y booth area right here, and into the door. And basically, what we'll be doing now is uh, get rid of this painting, and we'll need to open up this safe. And if you want to find out where it is, the combination for the code is actually in this top drawer right here. So, there you go. It's 10 left, 50 right, 5 left. So, you literally press. Left until you get to 10, and then you will feel like a vibration and hear a click. Then go right till you get to 50, and then it's left on the D-pad until you get to 5 again. But you've got to be quite precise with the timing. So as soon as you hear the click, leave go.
Some believe this is their life flashing before their eyes. Every action you take will bring you closer to your judgment. Carrie's gone totally insane. Maggie ran away. <laughs> she hates me for not standing up to him. She but right. now I'm all alone. And I wish my little girl would come home. Yeah. I can't just leave him like this. I can't just leave him like this. Man, this chick is getting angry! Like, that was some unbelievable stab in there, jeez. I'm only trying to find out what happened and then escape so I don't keep dying. Anyway, out of the room, back down the stairs, we are finally getting our 28th and final collectible. Which is just in the room we entered earlier on with the picture above the fireplace for collectible number 6. But this time it's just on the floor, just before the door. Pick that up, and the achievement for I Remember will unlock. I'm in hell, and he's on his way there. Okay then, so this next bit is going to take anywhere between 5 to 10 minutes to do. What we need to do then is turn the lights off completely. So turn all the lights off, including your torch, so what we'll need to do is when the ghost finally appears, um, just let her catch you and we'll be possessed by her. And we'll basically be killing the ghost by looking at a picture, or, or well, this certain picture, or turning on a light. But, of course, this is, just like the achievement earlier on, this is waiting for the ghost to spawn. So, I've cut it down just so it saves, you know, a bit of time. But, there's literally nothing else for you to do except walk around in the dark. Try not to poop your pants <laughs> while you wait for her to finally show up. But, she is getting close now, so we're almost there. But, I sort of just stay by the front door. If you can just... Try and stay sort of by the front door, um, by the stairs, or actually in the hallway where we got the achievement earlier on. Then, you know, it just makes it a little bit easier for you, really. So after that real deadly, <laughs> actually real scary bloody goddamn scream, we are now possessed. You, uh, you can turn your torch back on by pressing um, the uh, right trigger. Just click that in. Just so you have a clue where you go in. And to get this achievement then, to kill the ghost, I'm just sort of <laughs> getting your bearings. It takes a few seconds to get your bearings, but you can turn your torch on. I thought getting the light would actually work, and it just doesn't. So what we'll do, just go through the hallway right here that leads to the kitchen. And there's a picture of trees on your left-hand side. Just simply look at that, and that gets rid of ghosty ghost face. So there we are, excellent then. Um, well, I say sort of sadly, but now we're actually coming up to another random part of the game. Now, we've got to burn the photos, and there is... We can either look for a lighter, a candle, or a lighter that doesn't work, which doesn't help us. But it's in a completely random location downstairs, so it... So, you know, sadly, you're going to have to look around for yourself um, at this point. Could be in the bathroom, it could literally be in any room. For me, it was in the kitchen. I found a kitchen, uh, a candle in the kitchen. So, just keep searching around every single room, and eventually you'll either get a lighter or you'll get a candle. And once you find it, just go straight up to it and interact with it to get to the next point of the story. I mean, what kind of madman just places random candles and lighters in all random places? Why would you do that? Keep it in the same place. Although it makes for an even tense time when you can't follow a video for, <laughs> for a second, doesn't it? You're like, oh, shit. Uh, anyway, go back up the stairs, go to the left and all the way down the end of the hallway to basically finish all the scary stuff. That's it, we're done. You're just going to scatter the photos on this big bit of blood here, which wasn't here before. 
Uh, and that's it. The ghost tries to kill you and then she turns into, to be honest, an even freakier smiling woman. Just take a look at this. Watch this for a freaky ass smile. I don't know if it's um, if you were looking at her through ghostly eyes or if you were looking at her from what she used to be like, but that nobody smiles like that. No, nobody smiles like that. That was so clenched and forced. Hilariously freaky though. But anyway, like I said, we're now done with these scary stuff, but we have got a couple of things left to do, uh, another achievement to get. So we're going back down the stairs. Now you can relax, breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief, go into the living room by the front door on your right hand side here and turn, um, go through the door and then turn the TV on because we'll be watching that show with the stupid weird Italian man. I'm not saying Italians are weird, I'm saying this pissing guy's weird. You know, Italians make some of the best food in the world, so I ain't arguing. Anyway, once you've done there, now we can head back out to where we started the game. So use the left um, glass double doors there to go out, go back down the path that we came out earlier. Except, we're not quite done. We are very, very much almost done, but we're not quite there yet. We've just got, um, we've got credits to get through and then a little post scene as well, which is ac actually excellent and kind of unexpected. So go through the door here. Just keep following the path all the way down to the basement. And it starts getting, well, a bit freakier again. But, like I said, I mean, if you've been following the story, which I had, you'd sort of have a feeling and a, and a bit of an understanding why this is happening. And, I mean, it's absolutely fantastic. I love that it's not just your sort of typical, you end up in hell, now you've got to do some stuff to try and get out, or, or there's a ghost and you've got to try and escape, job, whatever. It's actually really cleverly thought out. Absolutely, the writing, the gameplay, everything in this game I really, really did enjoy. Fantastic, but definitely one of the better horry, uh, horry? <laughs> horror indie games that I have played. So now what we need to do, there's like a cage which should be right in front of you here and a TV will just, uh, eventually, there'll be a TV with a talking man in it and he'll have a little chat with you but it may take a few minutes for him to appear. You finally arrived. I overestimated your comprehension skills. No matter, you finally get it. If you take your place, someone will be with you and we can begin now. So as soon as he's done talking then, directly onto your left there should be an, um, some open doors. Watch the tiny little cutscene here, and then you'll have to watch the credits, you can't skip the credits. And then we'll just play the little post scene to get our final achievement of the game. Creepy. So there you have it then, well done Clinton McCleary and the rest of the guys and the gals who worked on this game, I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it and I hope you guys and gals have as well, because this honestly was just, I really really did enjoy this game. The horror side of it was fantastic as well, it was tense, like I said earlier there was no cheap jump scares or anything like that, and the gameplay, the story, everything was phenomenal in this game, so well done to everyone who worked on this game, completely completely enjoyed it. So, with this final achievement, now, this did glitch for me as well, and I'm not sure if it depends on what room you have to go in. So, we basically have to follow a quick path, and there's four rooms that you can go in. Some people are saying you can go in absolutely any room in the achievement unlocks, but I went in the very right room first. The achievement didn't unlock for me, so I had to replay this little bit, go through it again, and the room that I am showing you now that I go into 
did unlock. So if you play it and you could let me know just exactly what does happen, if it does glitch out on you and you had to replay it again, or if you go through the same door I did and it worked for you first time, then you know just let me know. So again, there's only one path for you to take until you get to an open door on the right. Now this is the part where you can choose all four doors which is supposed to unlock you the achievement right here. Go to the right-hand side, the sort of third door, if you wish. That is basically directly in front of you. Watch again the small little cutscene, and that'll be that. So there we have it then guys and gals, I hope you've enjoyed this game, I hope the video has helped you and it has got you all the achievements and trophies. Hopefully again you've enjoyed it and if you did, of course don't forget to like, comment and subscribe as normal and I shall see you beauts in the next one. Big love.